So now in this next flowchart and video, we're going to be looking at different reproductive events. And that's what we'll entitle the next flowchart, reproductive events. And basically what we're going to be doing here is labeling out some specific examples of how reproduction works in some specific organisms and see how that results in an overall view of reproduction as a successful way to reproduce, as a successful way to do one half of the necessary part of life, which is survive and reproduce. So let's see some mechanisms behind these events. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at are reproductive cycles. So these cycles are events that happen within a reproducing, reproducing organism's life. And those events are usually going to be seasonal. So these cycles are usually based off of the seasons. So they're usually seasonal in the sense that you're going to have the following sort of scenario. You're going to have an environmental cue. So the environment itself cues, um, let's say, trigger hormones, okay? trigger hormones. So environmental cues trigger hormones, uh, or let's say hormonal secretions. Okay, so the environment does something, something happens, let's say it's getting warmer, or let's say that the time of the year, the time of the day is getting longer. Those are environmental cues that are going to cause different hormonal responses in the organism. And because hormones are controlling mechanisms, they are signaling molecules, these hormones themselves, the cascade that follows, is actually what's going to be controlling the reproductive cycles. So we'll call this controls repro cycles. So essentially the environment provides a stimulus, that stimulus is responded to by hormones, and hormones themselves are going to control reproduction just like hormones control many other things. Let's look at a typical example of this. That example will be, um, let's say, in uh, Greenland caribou. That's what we're going to be looking at. So let's look at the example. Um, the idea first to understand before we get into the details of the example is that you're going to produce offspring only when the environment is rather suitable. Okay, Produce offspring only when environment is equal to suitable. You do not want to be producing offspring when there is a famine. You do not want to be producing offspring when there's a great amount of disease. So there has to be a suitability to the environment that cues you as an organism to say, okay, this is a good time to produce offspring. A great example of this that we can look at uh, is the Greenland or are the Greenland caribou. So let's see what they do. What is their reproductive cycle and how does this result in successful reproduction? So Greenland caribou. Okay. So what these guys do, this organism, it's a rather you know advanced organism, it's invertebrate. Um, this is going to be the following scenario. We're going to have these organisms, they migrate. And they migrate to calving grounds, basically the place at which they're going to give birth. That's what calving grounds means. Because they give, they give birth to calves, which are baby caribou, let's say. Um, and that's going to be in the spring. That's critical to understanding this. In spring. Remember, they're usually seasonal. Here's the season. Migrate to calving grounds in spring. Why? Well, that's because plants are plentiful during spring and plants are equal to nutrients. And if plants are equal to nutrients, that means that the calves that are being birthed at this time in the spring will have tons of food because plants are also growing at this time in the spring. So that makes sense, right? It makes sense to give birth in the spring to use this seasonal cycle of reproduction because that's when plants and nutrients will be available. So let's take a look at this interesting sort of uh, a counter example that we're going to see here. Not counterexample per se. Let's actually look at uh, a moment of time before 1993, I should say. And I think now after or since 1993, there's a big difference in what has happened. And it really shows us the importance of reproductive cycles and importance of our role in them as well. So before 1993, these Greenland caribou, everything's okay in the sense that they arrive at the same time as the plants sprout. So they arrive at same time as plants sprout. 
So that means that they give birth at the same time as the plants are sprouting. That means they are going to have successful offspring because their seasonal reproductive cycle is honed in very nicely to spring. So that's good before 1993. Since 1993, let's take a look at what happened and let's see how we can prove that a reproductive cycle still and always does happen. So look at this maintenance of the cycle, even though it may not be necessarily the best thing. So what we noticed since 1993 is that the average spring temperature, the average spring temperature has increased nearly 4 degrees Celsius. So let me write this very clearly as 4 degrees Celsius um, every year since 1993. So that's what's happened essentially. Um, and so now... Overall, we have a 4 degrees Celsius greater spring temperature. That means that the plants essentially sprout earlier. So the plants sprout earlier because their sprouting is directly tied to temperature. And so if you have a higher temperature, you have an earlier sprouting of plants. Big deal. What's the big deal? Why is this even necessary to understand? Well, that's because the caribou are intimately related to this plant sprouting event in the sense that caribou migration this movement to the calving grounds, it does not sense temperature. This environmental cue is not temperature for them, for them to do, off, to do reproduction. Their migration, their overall trigger is day length. Okay, so this trigger, which would be day length, is what tells them, hey, you should move to a place where you can give birth and where you can have successful offspring because there will be plenty of nutrients. Not, so the day, when they notice that the days are getting longer, they're like, okay, let's move to the calving ground. But what they don't really understand is the idea of temperature. So it's not temperature that's environmentally cueing the hormonal secretions that are going to cause reproduction to happen, but it's the day length. What has happened is that the day, the temperature certainly increased, but day length stays the same all the time. Day length doesn't change. It always has a continuous cycle. Thus, it makes sense to utilize the day length as your seasonal reproductive cycle. But guess what? What happens is because the day length has changed, because the temperature has changed, excuse me, what you have is the average number of caribou that are going to be, let's say, surviving and reproducing, being plentiful, has decreased 75%. That is a significant amount of decrease. Why has it decreased so much? Well, that's because they end up going to the calving grounds a lot later than they actually should because the plants have sprouted already and they missed this moment of sprouting. Before, they came at the same time right here. Because the plants are sprouting earlier, other organisms are going to get to them. Other organisms are going to eat those plants. The caribou... They're going to be the latecomers to this party of plants, let's say, of these nutrients. And guess what? They're going to not survive as much. Why aren't they surviving as much? Why don't they just come earlier? Well, that's because their trigger is day length. Day length will only change as much as it always does every single year. It's never going to be increasing a certain amount because the day is always 24 hours. It's just the amount of sun changes here and there based off of a seasonal cycle. And that shows you the direct relationship that Greenland caribou have to their reproductive cycles. So I think that's a great example. One more example that we'll look at in this uh, first part to reproductive events will be the uh, idea of an asexual or sexual choice in terms of what type of reproductive cycle you want to utilize. And this is actually seen in nature, the idea to pick and choose between asexual or sexual reproduction. And a good example of this would be within water fleas. So let's take a look. Water fleas. These are simple, you know, insect organisms, um, but they actually lay two types of eggs. Okay, they lay two types of eggs, both of which have their own separate reproductive cycles. One of those eggs, let's say, one of them requires, one egg requires fertilization, so that's the key here, to develop. Okay, so that would mean it's definitely the sexual choice, right? Because fertilization has to happen. Now, when would you use this? When would this be the choice that is made? This is when there is environmental stress. Use when there is environmental stress. Now, why is that? Why would you use sexual reproduction when there's environmental stress? Well, that's because you have the capability of making sure that this offspring turns into turns into something successful. 
react. So what's going to happen here is that when you have this environmental stress, you're going to utilize sexual reproduction, and utilizing sexual reproduction gives you the chance of having some sort of variation, some sort of success, some sort of genetic recombination that allows the offspring to combat the environmental stress successfully. Now, let's say you use the other type of egg. Let's say you use the other type of um, sexual or asexual reproduction. The other one would be parthenogenesis. So let's write that down. Other is equal to parthenogenesis. Now, remember, parthenogenesis is the asexual side of this story. And water fleas have this capability of parthenogenesis. This is fertilization. This is an unfertilized egg that's going to develop into an adult. Remember the root of partheno and genesis. This is going to be when you have a favorable environment. So use when there's a favorable environment. Now, why would you do this at a favorable time? Well, that's because you as an adult are successful in this favorable environment. You're going to copy yourself exactly and have a offspring that is also going to be successful in this very favorable environment. So it's just a cloning process. And thus, we can broadly consider this idea to be asexual versus sexual. So those are some reproductive cycles to know. We're going to be looking at one more reproductive event um, in the next video to conclude this idea of reproductive events.